Now we go to cross the basement membrane. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I'd like to speak about uh, the microinvasive and early invasive cervical cancer since we have now a possibility to treat also uh, conservatively uh, women that are very small 1B1 uh, cancer. So the standard treatment for invasive disease includes uh, a radical hysterectomy and pelvic lymphadenectomy. So the, what is the rationale of the treatment is the extirpation of the tumor with clear margins and the lymphatic, lymphatic vessels, it's lymph, lymphatic, but it's lymphatic vessels. And, uh, and, and so uh, we generally approach invasive cervical cancer with uh, uh, an hysterectomy that takes out also the parametrium and uh, the lymph nodes. Uh, there are early tumors with a small volume in which the removal of the parametrium can be omitted. And so uh, the risk of parametrium involvement is so low that we can uh, treat only uh, by um, hysterectomy and uh, lymphadenectomy, and uh, in addition, in some instances, the tumor volume can be so small that the risk of lymph node metastasis is limited, and pemphic lymphadenectomy can also be omitted. So, which is the factors that uh, uh, allow us to, to divide our treatment in a complete radical hysterectomy with parametric resection and lymphadenectomy hysterectomy and only check the lymph nodes and simple hysterectomy or conization. The volume of the tumor. The volume of the tumor is very difficult to calculate. There are uh, formulas uh, to calculate the volume, but to have uh, a measure that is a proxy of the volume, uh, the staging system devised two measures the depth of infiltration and the length of the, of, the, of, of the tumor. So there are now some categories that the conservative, where conservative approach is feasible. And the conservative approach, especially in places where the screening system is in place, are very attractive because we are seeing more and more women that are diagnosed with early, very small cancer and very early cancer. And in addition, the age of the first pregnancy in Italy as in, in, in Europe and in the States has been delayed because women are going uh, in, the, in the work system, in the studies, and they tend to have babies later on. For all this reason, the issue of conservative treatment of cancer, cervical cancer, is, is very important. So the categories where a conservative approach is feasible are tumors that are called, that are stage 1A1. That means that the tumor is 3 millimeter maximum in depth and 7 millimeter in length, and there is no lymphovascular space invasion. This pattern is very important. It's not included in the FIGO staging system, it's included in the S, in SGO um, staging system, but this is very important to have clear uh, the lymphovascular space invasion. For lesion that are uh, stage 1A1, you can treat with the conization, we can do hysterectomy. Generally, we do hysterectomy when the patient has finished their reproductive age or is postmenopausal. And while for uh, younger women who desire pregnancy, we perform only conization. Then there is a second category where the depth of infiltration is 5 mm and is 7 mm in length. And you need to do a lymphadenectomy to be sure that they are negative nodes. And for this category, you can again uh, do a simple hysterectomy and lymphadenectomy, or you can do a conization and treat the patient with a conization if she desires pregnancy. In addition to these categories, there are the traditional categories 
where you can offer conservative approach, recently there are some data showing that when the tumor is less than two centimeters in largest diameter and has negative nodes, you can even treat this tumor with a simple hysterectomy, is a um, simple hysterectomy is, is a further stage, with conization and lymphadenectomy. And uh, in, in particular, in this type of tumors, it's important to have no lymphovascular space invasion, otherwise you have to add chemo to this patient that you can treat, conservative, can treat conservatively. But the depot infiltration should be optimally be less than 10 millimeter. There is a third cat uh, four categories where tumor is between two and three centimeter, and there is some report on this is very um, experimental that you can reduce the tumor with chemotherapy, and if the tumor disappears, you can treat conservatively also this patient if they have uh, negative nodes. So from all this type of uh, uh, of differentiating lesion, it comes out that measure is, is very important to address the possibility of conservative tre treatment. And to have the measure of the tumor, you should have a cone. So all this measurement can be done on the cone, at least for the stage 1, A1, and 2. And for these cases, you can you can you should measure by indirect measurement by MRI or uh, ultrasound. So the measure that define microinvasive cervical cancer can be only obtained from a surgical space in containable lesion. And so the possibility to have a conservative treatment for microinvasive of uh, early invasive cervical cancer is based on the possibility to examine the wall lesion. And colposcopy is critical to excise all the lesion in order to define the diagnosis. So for 1A1, 1A2, for in, in, in differentiating these type tumors from little, small, 1B1, less than 2 centimeter, the, excise, the excision of the cone is important, is critical to have one specimen in which the pathologist can measure this feature because this is essential to offer the, the patient the possibility of a conservative uh, or tailored uh, treatment. Okay, so uh, now I will uh, spend a few minutes on, on my presentation on the relationship of colposcopy, cytology, biopsy, and the cone specimen. Because uh, one of the most important uh, message is that it's very difficult to predict the final histology between a CN3 or a 1A1 or a 1A2 or a small 1B1 only by uh, pre-operative assessment. And this, uh, this data you will have this data only on the specimen. And so it is very important when you do an excision with the leap, an excision or, or a cone, that you have in mind when you have major colposcopic features, when you suspect that there is the possibility to have a little an initial tumor, that you excise the right tissue to, have, uh, to give the pathologist the possibility to distinguish CN3, 1A1, 1A2, and small 1B1. These three categories are very difficult to uh, identify before, and you have the final diagnosis on the cone, but it's very important that you see before. So, of course, we have cervical screening program. We, f we find CIN, and we, we treat CIN, and among this lesion, we find uh, uh, initial... <coughs> in initial... Uh, uh, invasion. So the conservative the therapy, the pre a prerequisite for conservative th therapy is an accurate pre-surgical evaluation of the lesion. Cytology and colposcopy and histology has, has a key role in grading sites uh, to, to define the lesion and identification of early invasive disease. Uh, failure of excisional treatment of CIN 
is a consequence of an incorrect assessment of the lesion. So uh, we, we can avoid under over treatment, schedule proper follow up and prevent a risk of uh, disease persistence. And so I give you uh, some data of the characteristic of 1,000 patients treated by cone biopsy to see the relationship between the, con the final cone histology with uh, the referral pap smear, the punch biopsy, and the colposcopy with the final, uh, the, the final uh, diagnosis. In this series, the suspicion of cancer was, uh, by cytology was only 1.6%. The punch biopsy showed cancer in only five cases of the 1,000. These were the characteristic of the colposcopic pattern. Uh, a positive uh, colposcopy was in 86% and 72% of the patient had a not visible squamocolonic junction. So most of the, of the lesion were type 3 lesion, and we know this type of, um, of lesion are uh, very difficult to identify. And in some patients, we had also negative features. The quadrants, the, the involved quadrants, uh, were 45% uh, of the women as at least two uh, quadrants. The four quadrants was very rarely observed in 10%. And this was the cone histology. It was negative in 150, and invasive cancer was found in 70 uh, of, of the patient. If you remember, we did, we, this was an unexpected finding because the data that we have before, we have also now the relationship with the, the data before, we are not prognostic of invasive cancer. And this 69 included uh, 54 stage 1 A1, 9 stage 1 A2, 3 stage 1B carcinomas, and 3 adenocarcinoma. So all this had the conization because of, of positive examination, and we found this type of, uh, of disease only on the specimen, on the cone specimen. And this is the relationship between pap smear and cone biopsy results. And you see that uh, cytology showing low-grade CIL or less had four cases of cancer. And high-grade CIL, they have 58 cases of cancer that had uh, a pap smear show, uh, suggesting a CIN3. And um, in seven cases, the cytology suggested, uh, suggested uh, cancer. So, in, uh, in low-grade seal, you can have uh, CN23 and cancer, and in high-grade seal, you can have negative or CA1 uh, final histology. And in, uh, in persistent task low-grade CIL, 20, more than 25% had high-grade CIL, and 25% CN3 invasive cancer in CIN1, CN2 directed biopsy. So this series of patients shows that uh, the initial evaluation is not corresponding to the cone histology. Okay, <clears throat> lesion sites is very important as cancer was found mostly in lesions that were occupying three to four quadrants, while a negative cone biopsy was associated with uh, not with only one or two. Uh, quadrants involved. This was uh, the negativity rate, and so it means that small lesions were removed by biopsy. And this is the relationship between colposcopy and cone biopsy. So there were no cancer when the squamocolonal junction was visib visible and the negative colposcopy. But there were four cases of cancer when the squamocolonic junction not, not visible. These cancers are, of course, most of them, of them have microinvasive cancer, as I showed you before. <clears throat> and um, when the uh, colposcopy was positive, minor grade lesion, 
there were six microinvasive cancer in early invasive cancer, and, the, and most of the cancer had a grade two, a major major findings at colposcopy. And this is the relationship between punch biopsy and cone biopsy. And as you can see, 58 women, or out of 65 that had invasive cancer, had a previous biopsy that was CN23. And this is, is very important for what we said yesterday. Yesterday we said when you have a biopsy that shows CN23, not to do directly an hysterectomy because you can miss sometimes some early invasive or invasive cancer that uh, mm, that you couldn't recognize before the before the the, <coughs> the cone biopsy and you see there are three cases that were diagnosed as cancer on the biopsy and that CN23 in the final cone Okay, so low grade on CIL past marrow punch biopsy may hide high grade CIL or cancer, and punch biopsy may be an adequate endpoint to by which to judge the severity of the lesion. So the cone is very important. The second conclusion: the limits of colposcopy in presurgical assessment of high grade lesion can be the non-visibility of the junction, a misleading tar target biopsy, and very rarely no lesion. Okay, and these are some uh, pictures. This I hope you can see. Because this, <coughs> this is an aggregate lesion, and you don't see the junction. So when uh, you do an excision, you have to be sure to uh, excise uh, in in depth. This is the logo staining. This is again a major grade lesion. We are here. You you can see the lesion, the junction. These gland openings are typically immersed in an aceto-white epithelium, and these are predictors of CN2 or CN3. This is again another, another case which, where you see some areas, but also you see in this area there is something that is not uh, very, very clear, and this was uh, a, an early invasive cervical cancer that at the periphery the aceto-white um, epithelium. This again another lesion, another high-grade lesion here. Here is a, an enlargement. Here you see again the feature like before, the gland openings in the white epithelium. And here in this area you see that there is the morphology is not um, completely preserved. And if you look at the, large, uh, at the larger magnification, you see an area of erosion, and here an area of disaggregation. These are all suspects of early invasion. And maybe you can see here some uh, epiphysis. <laughs> this is, again, this area with this erosion, with this distortion of the normal architecture, it can be so suspicious. This is a typical uh, high-grade lesion. This is a visible junction. This is, is not a problem, but there is absence of, uh, of a typical vessel. This is another area of uh, major-grade lesion, which has very irregular vessel. And this was an early invasive cancer, because this has some vascular pattern which is different from what you see normally. And if you see an, an enlargement, you see these are the clinic, the colposcopic signs that make you suspect an invasion. But of course, you cannot make a diagnosis on this. You have to excise the tissue and to give the pathologist. And you see this area. This area is an area where the epithelium is detached and <coughs> there is some erosion again. And this also is a sign in the context of this very um, bad lesion, colposcopically looking bad, bad lesion, is a suspect of invasion. You don't see the junction, so probably you have to do um, a depth, a, an excision which is in depth. This is again 
another lesion with some erosion. This is again another very bad looking cervix. What is this? It seems to be a condyloma, but could be also a very, uh, a, a, a very severe lesion. And in fact, if we look in the higher magnification, we see all these vessels that are here. And this, again, is a colposcopy feature that is suspect for uh, early invasion, microinvasion. And again, you have to give the specimen to the pathologist to be sure if it is a 1A1, a CN3, a 1A2, or a little, a small 1B1. And this is uh, a peculiar case that came to our um, observation because of a pap smear showing ASCAS. And the women had before colposcopy and biopsy, and the biopsy was showing CIN1. So uh, she was sent to us. You will see that there is this little area of acetovite epithelium, but then you have this area. She, this woman was a nulliparous woman, so it's very unusual to have. And if you look better, you see all these vessels that are not normal, and the stroma also is not normal. And uh, we did a conization on, on this, this is more this lesion. And this was, in fact, an invasive cervical cancer that was stage 1B1 because the uh, length of the lesion was more than 7 millimeters. So the depth of infiltration was contained in, in 5 millimeters. So it was really a very small lesion, and, um, uh, but to have uh, the, and we were suspecting this uh, in cancer in colposcopy, but we had to remove the lesion to have uh, the, the uh, final diagnosis. So more recently, the spectrum of the women that we can uh, uh, offer conservative treatment has a bit, little bit enlarged because um, we see cancer that are very early, very small. So the question was, in stage 1B1 cervical cancer, is the removal of parameter always necessary, even in case of minimal involvement? So the idea is, do we need to remove the parameter? And sometimes we found in the parameter some node. It's very rarely found, but this is the reason why we, we, uh, when we do radical hysterectomy, we cut also the parameter. Because sometimes, in some cases, there is uh, a positivity of lymph node in the parameter. If you leave that lymph node, positive lymph node, you have persistent or recurrent disease in the parameter, which is very difficult to cure, to, cure, to treat. <coughs> this is the experience in, uh, from Dr. Landoni in Monza, and in stage 1B1, that was uh, uh, published. Uh, class 1 versus class 3 radical hysterectomy. And uh, this is 1B1 less than 3 cm, class 1, 1 versus class 3. Class 1 is without the extirpation of the parametrium, and uh, class 3 is uh, with the extirpation. And you see that when the tumor is small, the difference between simple hysterectomy and radical hysterectomy is, is very small. At at present, uh, there is a randomized study in uh, uh, stage 1B1 less than 2 cm. And uh, there was also some experience from the Germans that they compared uh, the excision of the parametrium versus no excision in, uh, in, in early cancer, and they showed that the difference was little. This was a... Um, a study showing the involvement uh, of, of nodes and parametrial nodes in women with early stage cervical cancer. And one of the most important reports were from Covens that sh uh, showed that when the tumor size is less than 2 cm and the nodes are negative and the depth infiltration is less than 10 mm, mm the involvement of the parametrium is 0.6%. 
So it's very rarely co-involved in parametrium. If the size is less than two centimeters, the pelvic lymph nodes are negative and the depth of the infiltration is less than one centimeter. So we started to select this group of women and on this group of women, we, if they desire pregnancy and they um, accept to do a very intensive follow-up, we offer conservative surgery. There are some uh, data on conservative surgery in cervical cancer that showed that uh, if the size is less than one centimeter, the recurrence rate was 2%, different series. But if the size is more than 2 cm, the recurrence rate is 30%. So it seems that uh, uh, size, the size less than 2 cm, uh, um, the, the recurrence rate is, is very low. And size more than 2 cm is very high, does not allow uh, conservative. So this was an early uh, report by Rob. They showed that in 26 patients with stage 1A2 or 1B1, four patients had radical surgery because they had no, uh, positive nodes. One patient had pelvic recurrence four months, 14 four months after initial treatment, but there were no deaths. Conception rate was 71%, and 10 deliveries were uh, 42%. Of course, if you do trachelectomy and you feel the leap, the specimen is totally different. And uh, if you go to the obstetrics, uh, obstetric outcome, if you do a, a radical trachelectomy, the obstetric outcome is very poor. So we uh, studied the conservative treatment for stage 1A2, 1B1 for cervical cancer patient. The patient are stratified in two, category, in two categories, patient with tumor diameter less than 2 cm and patient with tumor di diameter from 2 to 3 cm. We generally confirm the histology on the, a cone. This, uh, we include only patients with 2 cm uh, diameter. Uh, the distance between uh, the internal orifice and the tumor should be more than one centimeter on MRI. No evidence of pebbling lymph node uh, involvement and distant metastasis on CTC scan PET. Uh, all the function, absence on any familiar psychological, sociological condition potentially hampering compliance with the study. And, and of course, uh, the first step is a cone biopsy and laparoscopic pelvic lymphadenectomy. Is there are no risk factor, no lymphovascular space involvement. The, the tumor is less than 2 cm and less than 1 uh, cm in depth. Um, we do follow-up. If there are risk factors, like LVSA involvement invasion, we do uh, chemotherapy. And the, the, if margin are not free, 3 millimeter margin, we do again uh, surgery. And we published this experience recently. We had 36 uh, patients with 1B1, less than 2 centimeter. We had conization with the follow-up. And there was a single case of pelvic recurrence that has a lymphovascular space involvement. We had 21 pregnancies, 17 patients, three preterm deliveries, three first trimestrial abortion, one second trimestrial abortion, one top pregnancy, and one uh, fatal intrauterine death for genetic anomalies. So we think that in very selected uh, patient, it is possible to have cervical colonization uh, for patients uh, who have two, less than 2 cm diameter cancer with negative nodes and deep depot infiltration that is less than 1 cm. So is, and these patients are really very selected. Then we have a second protocol. We have not published the data for uh, women that have tumor between 2 and 3 centimeters, that they have negative nodes, and we do neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And if the tumor is shrinked, we offer these women cone biopsy after clinical radiological evaluation. And this is a case, I think this is a case from uh, Rob, I don't think it's, but we have the very similar cases. We have some cases that had no cancer after chemotherapy. 
this can be the results of uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy when the tumor is so so small. And uh, just because we are in a colposcopy course, you suspect cancer here because the cervical os is here and this tissue is all new tissue and the cervix is totally uh, changed in uh, morphology. And this is one of the most important aspects of, uh, of cancer. If you don't see very often cancer, sometimes you don't recognize it because CIN is always white, CIN3 is very dense acetoid, but the feature of cancer is alteration of the structure of the cervix. Now you, you, you can see here there is white epithelium, but the structure of the cervix is totally different. This is a very nice uh, result of chemo, so this will be in the future another possibility for women that do not fall in the category of 2 cm less than 10 mm uh, depth of, uh, of infiltration, negative nodes, no special tumor, squamous or adenopurate. Thank you for attention.